Hi, my name is Rebecca Hoffman. I am a colonorectal surgeon at Geisinger Medical Center, although this video has no relationship to that position. But I was teaching a medical student boot camp today, and we did, as part of that, an instrument identification. I thought it'd be really cool and really helpful to expand that to some of you guys, and you might find it helpful as you're about to embark on your internship in the coming months um, to go through and quiz yourself to see what these instruments are. So without further ado, what I'll do is I'll show you a series of instruments. I have about 20 or so from a major basic laparotomy tray. Quiz yourself. I'll show you a picture of the um, of the instrument. I'll scroll up and down. You can see, get a good look at it and write down what you think. I'll then um, pause the video and then we'll go through an answer key and I'll give you some tips and tricks for what I think about how um, to use these instruments. This is instrument A. Instrument B. Instrument C. Instrument D. D as in dog. Instrument E as in elephant. F as in frog. G, instrument G. Instrument H, H is in horse. I J L
O. Oh, that's N actually, N. O as an octopus. P. This is Q. All right, so hopefully you've had a chance to take your guess at all the instruments in the tray. Now I'm gonna go through with you all the instruments and give you a little bit of tips and tricks, I think, for each of them so you have a better understanding. Now, you also should know that some of the names of these instruments can be somewhat cultural, uh, depending on your institution. I'll try to hit all of them, but I can't uh, promise that I'm calling them the same exact thing that you will in your space. So that being said, um, the first instrument that we saw was a Richardson retractor. How many of you got that? This is a Richardson. This is about a medium size. They come in smaller or baby rich. They come in larger Richardsons as well. These are really helpful for holding up the abdominal wall. They're really um, strong instruments. So when you really need a good pull on things, but that is a Richardson retractor. Now, the next one, I admittedly only know our local institution name for it. We call this a FOSS retractor. This is also helpful for holding up the abdominal wall. Many of you might have thought this was a Deaver, which I would have thought as well. But you may contrast this to um, this letter J, which I asked you to say. J is actually a very narrow Deaver. See how this kind of has this deaver? It curls up, goes down, and then angles a little bit up again. A little bit of an ergonomic hold when you're trying to hold something up. This FOSS retractor has a different like platypus kind of head on it right here. and actually goes quite straight across this way. So it curves up and goes straight. This is more for holding an upward direction rather than kind of an outward and upward direction. So you can see the difference in the in the um, blades here. One is perfectly kind of straight without a platypus type head. The other is. So this one is our FOSS retractor here. Um, this one is a um, narrow deaver. These also come in narrower or smaller and they also come in very wide deaver. Um, I like this instrument quite a bit. The next instrument was this. Many of you should have gotten this. This is a handheld malleable. Um, this malleable also comes in very, very narrow. Some people call that a ribbon. Um, it also comes in a much wider version as well. It's malleable because you can bend it to the way that you want it. Um, it also can be used, sometimes people use this to hold down bow while they're closing fascia. Um, so it can be used to kind of push down safely on bow. You would not want to leave this in a belly, however. So anyway, narrow malleable. Letter D, our next instrument, is this instrument. It was a babcock. Babcock. You can see how it has the openings in the end. It has no serrated part on the inside. And it's kind of long. This is a gentler type of instrument. It's used to hold bow. The most common time that I use it in my practice as a colon and rectal surgeon is to reach through an ostomy site and to pull that bow up through. Um, generally think of it again as a fairly gentle instrument um, when I'm just trying to hold bow in and out of places. Contrast that with the Alice clamp here. As you can see, this Alice doesn't have the openings on the end like that. Um, and also has kind of serrated tips here. This is a much, um, not as gentle 
of a clamp. I typically will use this in bowel anastomosis when we're holding up an end that we know is going to be cutting off. So you'll ask us to ask for you'll notice that we'll ask for many Alice clamps in a row to hold up a section. Again, this is not uh, as gentle as the Babcock because of the serrated and the um, grippy edges here, um, but this is an Alice clamp. Um, the next instrument here is number F. This instrument, this is a Kelly clamp. This is actually a longer Kelly. There are shorter Kellys too. But you can see that on the inside, there are some um, kind of grippy serrations there and that this is a blunt end. This is a nice clamp um, when you're, you'll see this, most of them are cutting and tying across mesentery. So when we're kind of clamping off um, those vessels along the way and tying underneath, um, they're very useful um, in that regard. Um, so that's a Kelly clamp. Contrast that then with something we call a schnitt or a cryol or, uh, to, or a tonsil even, okay? That is letter G, all right? So you'll see, compare these two, okay? One is much more dainty and pointier, that's this, the cryol or the tonsil, versus the kelly, which has a more blunt tip, okay? Like the cryol, very much um, to dissect very gently to spread tissues apart um, but again to know that it's very pointy so I don't use it ever as a blind poke um, into something. Um, when we're clearing off the top of an anvil like when we're doing an end-to-end -end anastomosis for um, a low colorectal um, anastomosis we'll use this to clean off the top um, fat. The other way that I um, typically talk about using these two instruments is when I'm getting into the belly for um, Hassan technique um, for laparoscopic case. So if you make the incision um, above the umbilicus and you're, um, you get down through, you make an incision in the fascia, you use your coker clamps to hold up on the fascia. So you're pulling the fascia and the hopefully the peritoneum up away from any bowel underneath. Um, you can sometimes, um, if you're going to kind of try to poke through the peritoneum, you can you should use something that's very blunt. So if I Kelly to um, poke through, you won't want to use something that is very pokey that would not, in fact, that would go through um, a bowel rather than push it away. So we use a blunt tip thing. If instead I don't want to push the peritoneum away and I want to just grab the peritoneum and pull it up and get in by using a scissors and incising, I would use this, the cryo or the tonsil, to pull up on the peritoneum. Um, because it is very directed and very pointy. So cryol is pointy, Kelly is not pointy. Next instrument is generally very self-explanatory. I hope most of you got this right because of the way that it looks. This is a right angle clamp, again, used to grasp things, grasp vessels on end that you want to tie um, or to get under and use for um, aiding in dissection. So this is a right angle clamp. Next is one of my favorite instruments. This is letter I. This is in fact the coker clamp. You can see the teeth on the end. I'll try to show you that end on. It's a little bit blurry, but you can still see. Um, there you can see. This is a lot of force. So you wanna be very careful with this instrument on anything other than tissues that are very strong, i.e. fascia. This is the most common um, use for this instrument, I would say. I actually use this to close in my left hand. This is a cultural thing from where I did residency um, to grasp the fascia and use it like um, kind of as a more dexterous instrument. Um, another good use for it is to hold up fascia. Um, if you have two coker clamps, hold up on one side while they're doing exploratory laparotomy and lysis of adhesions. So you'll pull up on these uh, on one side of the fascia while somebody on the other side of the table is able to then see very well and dissect free that bowel. So um, this is a really heavy duty instrument um, for dealing with that. So the coker. Uh, we already talked about uh, J, which is the narrow deeper, so I'm not going to go over that all again. Um, next, I will talk about a very familiar instrument to most of you, should be at least. K is this instrument. You should all know and love this instrument. This is the Army Navy retractor. 
10 points if you can tell me which side is the army and which side is the navy side. We'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Anyway, that's student friend, okay, and intern friend. All right. Um, our next instrument is this. This is the ferris, all right? This is what many people use in their left hand when they're closing fascia. It's got really, really strong alligator jaws. It's a very hefty instrument and can be used in a very dexterous way as well to manipulate um, layers of the abdominal wall. So that's this. You may notice another name in your institution. M, letter M. Also, you should know, well, this is a DeBakey forcep. This comes in shorter versions and longer versions, but in general, the DeBakey has no teeth on the end other than those very small, small serrations. N, this you should also know very well, should be your friend. This is the Adson forcep. Okay? It also has little teeny teeth on the end. While it's a great instrument to hold up skin and you're doing those subcuticular um, and deep dermal stitches, it drives me nuts when you're trying to um, reposition your needle because um, of these little um, jaws at the end. So um, be very careful. I tend to re reposition my needle with my fingers, although that is not recommended. Um, but it is hard because of these jaws in the end to grab anything that's very um, like a needle. All right, But it's great to grab skin. If you don't have this, for instance, if you're like me and you drop adsense on the floor sometimes when you're finishing closing, you can sometimes ask for an adsen brown, which has a little bit of a different um, tip on it, but it's still used for the same applications, which is using, um, which is uh, holding up and retracting the skin for yourself. So adds in forceps uh, or toothed adds in, and then an adds in brown would be your next step. This instrument, O, oh, this is a snap or a hemostat, okay? This is an instrument that's very frequently used to um, tag suture if you're trying to um, keep something um, to tag something, to note it, okay, to make sure it doesn't get lost. Um, this can also be used as a small dissector. It has a kind of a daintier, um, pointier kind of tip, kind of similar to the tonsil or the cryol. If you were to put some plastic pieces on the end of this, and then they're yellow or red, you make this into a rubber shod, which you can use to tag very tiny um, 405060 suture so you don't crush the suture. But this is a snap or a hemostat, very familiar instrument. P, P is Metzenbaum scissors, okay? These are used to cut tissue, most commonly used to cut adhesions, but other kind of tissue as well. They are fine scissors that should ideally be very nicely sharpened um, to give you a good um, to good uh, cut of tissue, okay? They should not be used for suture. They will dull very quickly with that. So please be kind to your techs and to your instrument processors and for your future self when you grab a pair of these um, and just use them for tissue, not suture. And speaking of not using them for suture, these are heavy scissors or suture scissors. Um, you can use these to cut um, not only suture, but you need to cut drains shorter, things like that. Mesh um, in the abdominal wall, as long as it's safe. Um, these are going to be your real, like, heavy-duty, cut-through-anything kind of um, kind of scissors. So, all right. Well, I'd love to hear your comments. It was really great um, to have you tune in. If you did, I hope you learned something, and I wish you the best.